just realize that him seeing your character is part of you having a life. You know what? Yeah. This is really tough if you really like the guy. <laughs> if it is, you are it completely is. smitten over this guy and you want to keep talking to him, it can be tough. So this is just about reminding yourself. If you catch the eye of the guy you're attracted to, look right into his eyes for just a couple of seconds and then look down. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I am Sherry Lynn, and I am here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsyth. Hi. Hi. Thought it would be fun to do a couple of videos for singles. We've done a few already, but we've never done anything that has to do with a simple subject such as getting him to notice you. So why are we talking about this today? We've had so many requests for it, and there's so many single women. And whether you have never been married or have been married more than once, if you're single, this is a subject that's going to interest you. All of us can get the attention of, of guys we don't aren't interested in. It, I, for some reason, those guys seem to be bold. I don't think it's ever changed over the generations, but the guys that you might want, do you ever feel like, how do I get him to notice me? So we're going to jump right into all of the things you can do to get him to notice you. So the first one is probably the most obvious one, but we'll go ahead and go over it because we do need to include it. Dress to impress. What are we talking about? What do we mean when we say dress to impress or dressing up? You dress every day as though today might be the day you might meet the one. I think a lot of ladies, I've heard this on our channel too, will get comments and say, I'm not going to dress up to go to the grocery store. I'm just not doing it. And I don't think the message here is to be fancy. I think a lot of people hear dress to impress and they hear fancy. I think a lot of this can even have to do with just having your hair combed nicely in a nice, if you have to put it back in a ponytail, just it's, it's organized. It's not a big, you know, nest. I've seen so many women today that maybe go to the store in their somewhat kind of lounge clothes. Plus on top of that, their hair's like kind of looks like it hasn't been brushed and there's no makeup whatsoever. And you just, you look, you look disheveled. You don't look polished and you can look dressed <laughs> up without wearing something fancy. If you just pay attention to some of those smaller things. There's so many cute clothes. Now there's cute jeans, uh, cute, casual clothes. I've never seen as many attractive clothes as there yeah. are now. And you can put them to, and they're comfortable. So yeah. There's... Dressing up doesn't, it doesn't no. always mean uncomfortable. I think there's no, a no. misunderstanding about that. In my mother's day, when you dressed up, you wore a girdle. Yeah. This subject also includes how you smell. I, I don't, I know that doesn't technically go under the way you're dressing, but it kind of does in a way because it's part of your appearance. And the way that you smell is really, really important. Over 85, 85% of men are admit to loving floral scents. You can achieve a floral scent even with oils, if you're not, if maybe you're yeah, allergic to perfume oils. or something like that, you can, you can have floral uh, shampoo. There's so many different floral scents you can choose. And if you don't love florals, most men love the smell of vanilla and cinnamon, which sounds kind of strange. You don't have to put vanilla on you, but you can get scents that have those notes in it and it will attract him. Okay. The next one. Don't travel in packs of females. <laughs> It, there's nothing wrong with having lots of female friends, but when you're at a party or somewhere where you might meet men, men are going to be more intimidated to go up to a woman who's around in a bunch of women or even men to single her out. And so at times, if you're, especially if you're attracted to someone, you're trying to get someone's attention, move around the room. If you're in a social situation and don't just always be with a group so that they'd have to come in and single you out. We did a poll on our Instagram because we wanted to see, yeah. we were just curious how many of our ladies that follow us met their husbands while they were either by themselves or maybe with one friend and, or if they met their husbands when they were with a bunch of friends. And it's still not over yet, but the last I checked, it was over 70% of our ladies said that they met their husbands when they were alone or with maybe one friend. Including I think that's me. interesting. Including me. I met Including my husband me. when I was with one friend. I had one friend with me. And I think that says a lot about this point that they might be intimidated by a large pack of ladies, especially. <laughs> I, like the word, I like the word pack. 
I would be, I think about it from my perspective. I might be a little intimidated by a large pack of men. I probably wouldn't I would approach have. a man that I yeah. thought was attractive if he was with a bunch of guys. I'd probably be like, Ooh. well, you'd feel like you were interrupting. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a good one. And it's not one that you constantly are aware of or thinking about. Yeah. Number three, wear something unusual. And this could be just to attract attention, like a, a necklace or a pin or something in your hair that maybe can start a conversation. Something a little different that invites, where did you get that? Or what's the story behind that? Or something like that. Something unusual. The store I used to work in, we had a constant item that would come in every season. And it was called a conversation print. And I thought about that when I was reading this, like, oh, a conversation print. One of my favorite ones that we had was this cute little blouse and it had telephones all over it, <laughs> little vintage telephones. And I remember one of the staff staff wore it a lot on the floor, on the sales floor. And people would constantly comment on, oh, I love those little phones on your shirt. And the reason why it's called a conversation print is that it's just that it, it causes people to come up and comment on your print. So when we say wear something unusual, it could be so many different things. I've, I have a friend that has a really feminine style, but her cell phone case is her favorite football team. And her cell phone case can be a conversation starter with right. that. Uh, the next one. <laughs> Okay. Don't hide your talents. Now this one was specifically, I don't know whether it happens to very many other people, but it, it absolutely happened to me. I was a very, very shy. Bob was not. One of the things that he said really attracted him to me was when I went on a few dates with him and then he got me to play the guitar. I played uh -huh. the guitar and he said, when I started playing the guitar, the real me came out. Mm -hmm. I was more me because I was more relaxed. So not hiding your talents can be many talents. It can be art. It can be something in your work. It could be anything, but don't, that's different than bragging about your talents, but if, let him see some of your talents yes. and it can help you relax and be more you around him. But this could be even just one, one dish that you can make. What if you are really good at making a certain cookie and you bring it to a, a social event? There's so many different things that you could do. Well, the problem is, is that people traditionally think of talents as in certain categories, yeah. like art, music, acting. There are talents in everything, including, like you said, cooking. I had a friend once who said she had no talents. And then after I got to know her better, she had so many talents. She had talents with people. She was fantastic. Yeah. With, she was good at, at uh, flower decorating. She didn't consider that a talent. Yeah. But uh, you have talents. Everyone has talents. Yes, for sure. So. Uh, the next one is let go. <sighs> this has to do with you and your self-consciousness. Now, I know this one is tough for those of us that are naturally <laughs> self-conscious, but there are things you can do and you can practice how to let go a little bit more because the self-conscious woman he's not going to notice you or he'll notice your self-consciousness and he won't want to approach you. That's, that's a little tougher. That's going to take some practice for some of us. And the best way to do that from my experience is to be doing something you're comfortable with. So like if you are say dancing and you, and you're a particularly good dancer or something like that, so something that makes you more comfortable or you can practice doing this too. Something that I personally do because I have struggled with this. Obviously I've been married a long time, but when I dated, I was very self-conscious and I was nervous because I didn't have a lot of experience <laughs> with men. And one thing that helps me is to do something before I'm going to go somewhere that relaxes me. So it's going to be different for everyone. For me, I like to go on a run before I knew I was going to be around a bunch of boys <laughs> that, that like say that evening, I'm going to be around a bunch of guys. I would go on a nice long run before it helped me relax. Some women love yoga. Some women just maybe even just taking a walk, just do something beforehand. If you, if you can, that relaxes you and brings down all that nervousness. The next one is eye contact. And this is, this has been done for generations. If you catch the eye of the guy you're attracted to look right into his eyes for just a couple of seconds and then look down, it shows your kind of your modesty. This is something that is very attractive and guys do it too, not just women. And if you do that, it's, it's very attractive to them. I think you might want to practice this beforehand too, because you, you might want to stare. <laughs> well, you don't want to look at him and look sad or look angry. Cause I know for me, like 
I, people constantly think that I'm angry when I'm not, <laughs> or people constantly think I'm, I'm sad when I'm not. It's just some of my facial expressions sometimes look a certain way. So I think you, it's really important to practice this because if you, you look, look at him and you look sad or you look stressed and then you look down, he's going to think what's wrong. So perhaps this eye contact thing comes with a, like a pleasant little smile. <laughs> Well, you can look in the mirror. You can practice those things in the mirror. You think, oh my gosh, do I look like that when I... Or record yourself. You can record yourself. Yeah. Okay. okay, the next one is being busy. Also known as like having a life. Showing that you're actually not just anytime, any place, you're there. You, you actually have things to do and you're not constantly at his beck and call. I have to say when I met Bob, we were in college. So, you know, busyness was relative, but I didn't have a job. I was going full-time to school and so was he, but we had classes and things we had to go to. Just showing that you're, you have a life outside of him. You're not just waiting and with like, oh, finally somebody asked me out. I just want to say my one thing that I did when I dated is I never accepted a date within the first day that I was asked. I think that's a part of having a life, meaning you want to go out tonight. I would have to check and see if what day is available for me. I always did that when I dated because I didn't want to appear that I was always free. Does that make sense? It does. But even then you've got to be sensitive because like in my case, Bob, his standard was if you turned him down once, he never asked you out again. And I could feel it. He didn't tell me that, but I could just sense it. And unless it was a real good reason, like you say, I have a class or something like that. But, uh, but if you said I'm busy today, he may never ask he often didn't ask the girl out again. And I think that is rare. I think that's very unique and rare. I think, and, and, and it's one thing to say no. And it's another, I'm not saying I turned down a date and just said, no, I, I'm talking about if he asks you out, Hey, you want to go out tonight? Instead of saying, yeah, <laughs> I got let me check and see what I'm doing. Let me check. I got to check. I'm not sure what I'm doing tonight. Let me get back to you and let me check because you don't want to appear that you're always right. free all the time. And in your case, it worked out fine for you. But I think in most cases with guys, you want to be busy. You want to appear to have other plans. So and this, especially for younger girls can be tough. Like you're, you're mentioning, even if you aren't busy, you can appear to be busy and you want to have a life. You want to appear to have plans and a life and you don't want to just drop everything all the time for him. And this can be tough to show because we're talking about getting noticed. Well, how do you show someone that you're busy when you haven't even met them yet? As you get to know people, there's plenty of opportunity for them to see your character or lack of. Just realize that him seeing your character is part of you having a life. Yeah. The way you exactly. treat people, the your goals and ambitions. This has been helpful for me. I imagine me in the past and wishing I had this and what I might do mm -hmm. if I had, because for me, I would have used some things like I thought that if a guy asked me out, I had to go out with him, even if I had no interest in him at all. And then I was miserable with the countdown to the date. I didn't realize I didn't have to. And so that being busy part would have given me a great polite out yeah. instead of thought I either have to be rude or I have to go with somebody that I'm uncomfortable with. And right. True. I just didn't know. The next one is say goodbye first. For some of us, that's harder than others. If you're on a telephone conversation, or even if you're physically with them, end it just a, a moment or two before them, instead of always being the one for them to say, I have to go now. I think there's so many different ways you can say goodbye without using the words bye first. So you can say, well, I really enjoyed chatting with you, or I really love speak. Thank you for, for chatting with me today. Yeah. It was great meeting you. There's so many things you want to cut the conversation short, just a little bit early so that he is still wanting more. If that makes yeah. sense. This is really tough. If you really like the guy, <laughs> if you are completely smitten over this guy and you want to keep talking to him, it can be tough. So this is just about reminding yourself that, that you're going to be the one to end the conversation. <laughs> and you know, a lot of this is very small cues because he may want to continue it. And you don't just need to end it too soon either. Yeah. There's a lot of nuances in that, but women are, are tend to be more sensitive mm -hmm. and we can kind of, you can kind of feel when things are winding down. I personally think a lot of pauses is my opportunity to go, well, <laughs> if there's wow. a lot of like, you know, three second pauses, perhaps I might say, okay, this is the cue that this is starting to wind down. Part of getting him to notice you, one of the points that we wanted to mention is about those 
listening skills. Oh. Listening skills, art of conversation. And just remember, bottom line, most people's favorite subject is themselves. And yeah. so if you, if you get a guy talking about him and you mm-hmm. listen, then your only job is to listen to what he says and remember it. That's going to go a long way. Yes. And asking open-ended questions is such a classic tip for any kind of conversation skill, anyone looking to be a better conversationalist. So asking him open-ended questions is sure to get him to notice you. Just not a yes and no one. Something that you can do if this is hard for you is plan ahead of time before you go into a social setting, topics that you want to discuss or things that you might want to bring up. Easy things that you could ask any guy, have those things ready so that you're not kind of in that situation and caught and you're not sure what to do. No, in in my book, we talk about subjects to avoid unless you know him well, like uh, religion, politics, especially nowadays. And there's a lot of things. So yeah. Another part that goes with that, with this conversation skills is how you speak about others. Speaking kindly about other people is really important or just not saying anything negative about other people. Yeah. Just being aware of, of how kind you're speaking about others is mm-hmm. really going to get his attention. Being catty is not, is not attractive. And some women kind of fall into that because they're trying to relate to certain topics and situations and you start to kind of want to relate to people and then you start to complain and it gets you into this place where he's going to observe that you are a little catty. Okay. The next one is stillness. What does that mean? (laughs) Some of us don't have this problem, but if you're fidgeting, uh, constantly picking at things and fidgeting is, uh, is not as attractive. It's kind of high anxiety. And it may be hard if you're nervous and shy. It may be a little hard, but it, you don't have to be perfect because no one is. Right. right. This, is just, this is just going in, in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about being a statue. Oh, he's going to notice you if you just act like a statue over there in that chair. That's not what we mean. We just mean not fidgeting, not constantly. I see ladies doing this all the time and they play with their hair and it sends a message, whether, whether it's true or not, it sends a message that you are nervous and we don't want to send that message that we're nervous if we can help it. We are. Yeah. Even if we are, even if we are, (laughs) because the nervousness won't last forever. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I've even read body language experts saying that grabbing certain things and fidgeting them is a sign of insecurity. It's a nonverbal cue. So just being aware of that, like you said, we can't be perfect, especially if we really are nervous, but just being aware of that might help you to be a little bit less jittery. Yeah, exactly. The next one is femininity. Very broad femininity, subject. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we do, we've done whole videos on this. There's sections in my book and that's the way you move the way you talk, the way you walk, all of it, and what you're wearing, everything. The idea is you're not, you're not wanting to be like him. You're wanting to be the complimentary opposite. Stay true to you (laughs) and be a woman. (laughs) Competition can mean you win, not so much an argument, but a debate. Yeah. Right. Winning in this case means you will lose. So don't uh, one up him. Yeah. No, don't one up. Okay. What's the next one? Well, the next one is being tactile or touching him, non-sexual, non-threatening way. I had a friend who was so naturally good at this. And she did this with men and women. Every time you talk to her, as she talked, she would kind of touch you on the arm and to make a point. She didn't do some big thing. It was just like on the shoulder, she'd say, and wasn't that great? And she did this and, and doing it lightly, not certain parts of his body, obviously are off limits, but the forearm or the shoulder, just a light touch as you're speaking here and there, not constant. This is a delicate subject and you have to be careful. You, if you know anybody that does this well, hopefully you know what we mean. I think that this is all about warmth. And Correct. creating um, some type of warmth with your touch, meaning you're approachable, you are friendly, and you're not being creepy and touching everyone, but you are showing warmth with the right moment. And like you said, I think all of these areas are good. The shoulder, the elbow, the hand, maybe even the upper back. Those are all great areas for you to reinforce perhaps just one little touch with him. It's um, brief. It's, it's very brief. brief. Just a touch. Like yes. that. And don't, it's don't just rest. Mm-hmm. the intent is warmth. 
and affection. Okay, the next one is admiring him. And this is so easy. There's so many things to admire and masculine traits are anything to do with his courage, his tenacity, his strength, anything like that. that you can also compliment him on how he, his appearance. That's an easy one to get a man to notice you, especially if they're a stranger. It's hard to admire his courage when he might be a stranger. So if you wanted to say, I love your haircut. Or um, I love the the pairing that you have on. Like with dad, that's easy. He's always got a nice suit on. Oh, and yes. I can always compliment his tie and his shirt combination. Cologne. Cologne. That's oh, great. yeah. The way great he smells. Cologne. Yes. Great yes. Cologne. That's a good one. I love the way you smell. That's a great one. And it's it's masculine, but it's also just kind of breaking the ice with him too. You're complimenting his masculine traits, but you're also kind of breaking the ice. Opening the door. That's a big one. Uh, thank you for opening the door. That was That was kind of you. Thank you. Uh, there's so many things you can do to n- admire him. You have to yeah. say it. Or you can say, I heard this wonderful thing about you. Ah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, hopefully this isn't someone you uh, just saw that you have no idea whether he's a predator. You've right. maybe, uh, <laughs> observed him <laughs> at a party or something. He's obviously there. Um, things that you have observed about him or heard about him that are good from other people. If, you, if, you're, if you're talking to him for a few minutes and you learn about his career, that's something that a lot of people start with when you first are introduced perhaps he's in school and he's studying something, complimenting him or admiring that in him. Mm-hmm. That's right. Feel good. And we have one more being socially generous. What does that mean? That means laughing at people's jokes, even if they're only semi funny. And uh, that doesn't mean they're really dirty jokes, but we're talking about humor here, Mm -hmm. generous to all people, not just him. And he will see this in you, that Mm -hmm. you care about other people, that you are concerned about their comfort and that they're having a good time too. He'll see it. Yeah. I like the wording of this being socially generous because it's just having it's looking at people with the best intentions. And it doesn't mean that you need to be weak. I think a lot of women might hear this and go, well, I'm, that's not my personality or something like that. But it doesn't mean that you can't be kind and see the best in people. If some people say it's not my personality to be kind, that's a part of us that needs that can be a little bit more fluid. In other words, our character, my character, your character is always should be fluid enough that we're improving ourselves. And we're not just, I'm not a very nice person, end of subject. You you can improve and you don't have to be like that. That is well, some, some ladies are very comfortable being in a living in a life where they are sarcastic. They I've heard this so much. I'm just realistic. No. Some women, you know what I mean? They kind of live in the social setting of I'm always sarcastic. I always like to crack these kinds of jokes, and that's just who I am. But just be aware that if you're out there looking for a man and that's your personality, it can come across to him that you are bitter, resentful, all these negative things that might not be the real you all the way. And what might he might think, what might be she, she saying about me to others when I'm gone? None of us need that. And it doesn't make us happy either. That was kind of a lot of things. Uh, but, <laughs> but you know what? I wish I'd had this when I was meeting Bob because it was, yeah. some of them particularly would have helped me. And uh, I think some of these you might naturally already do. And these might be easy, like the smiling or the eye contact. And then others you may not even be aware of. And that's great. Then you can work on them. I I wish that I had had this when I was dating. (laughs) Dixie is in the middle of writing this book for singles. So if there's anything that you feel we left out, if you have any questions about any of the things that we've said, we would love to hear from you because this is in a way part of the journey of writing the book is going through these videos and creating this content so that the book will have very thorough and helpful information in it. And we have done uh, questionnaires before on our site saying, what would you like me to include subjects in the book? And I just want you to know, I have listed all those things they're in my outline so if there's any more i'll be happy to take a look at those as well yeah and we are here every week so if you are new to our channel check back with us next time please hit subscribe and like it helps our channel grow if you can and you will also get notified when we have a new video if you subscribe to our channel we are also very active on social media so you'll have to check out all of the links attached to this video to connect with us and other social media forums And last but not least, Dixie's books are all attached to this video, including the workbook that we've discussed today. That will be attached in the video notes so that you can go take a look at that and read 
her book, Fascinating Women in Town. And, and remember, this isn't just that this first book is not just to married women. It has a, a chapter for single women, and most of the chapters, like character and things like that, are for both single or married. All right, so that's it for today. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye.